Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at the basics of getting patterns from Adobe Illustrator to Spoonflower. So I'm assuming that you know how to make at least a basic pattern and so that inside the swatches panel in a file in Illustrator you have something that is an actual pattern swatch. Here I've got that same pattern swatch in use in the document but this is not what we send to Spoonflower and the reason why we're looking at Spoonflower is because it's a special case. It operates differently to most of the other websites that you will be uploading content to. So let's go and have a look at Spoonflower. Now I've just logged into my account on Spoonflower and I'm on my dashboard. So if you go here and click on dashboard that's where I am. But when you sign in and log into Spoonflower, the place that you'll be working is in the Design Library. So let's just click here on Design Library. This is my Design Library. These are patterns that I have uploaded to Spoonflower. Now they look very similar to what we just saw in Illustrator, but in actual fact they're really, really different. And what makes Spoonflower different to other online print-on-demand sites, for example Redbubble, is that Spoonflower just wants your pattern swatch. It doesn't want a document that's filled with a pattern. So if we go back to Illustrator here, this is a document and it's filled with my pattern and Spoonflower does not want that. What Spoonflower wants is the actual pattern swatch and the reason for this is really fairly self-explanatory. Let's just go and select this design. I'm going to open it up. So what happens with Spoonflower is that when you're buying on Spoonflower, you're buying all sorts of different sizes. So you could buy a fat quarter, but you could also go ahead and buy yards. So you could buy 42 inches wide of a piece of fabric. And you might want like 10 meters. Well, you can't pre-create a document that's 10 meters and filled with a pattern. And what if somebody wants one that's 12 meters? So the way that Spoonflower works is it actually wants the pattern swatch, the exact same thing that you are using in Illustrator when you fill a document with a swatch, which is what I've done here. And Spoonflower just wants a swatch because it wants to be able to create a document of whatever size it needs and fill it with the pattern and then deliver it to you or deliver it to the person that you sold it to. So in a way, Spoonflower is going to operate a little bit like what we're doing in Illustrator, but it's important to be really, really clear about that. I get a lot of questions about Spoonflower and Redbubble as if they were the same thing and they could not be more different. So when you first come to Spoonflower and you sign up, you want to go to the Help Center and you want to go into this Designing and Uploading area, which I've already opened. And one of the things or the thing that we're going to be most interested in today is this 150 DPI, the best resolution for Spoonflower. Now there's also stuff about image resolution and saving image files as sRGBs. So this is the sRGB one. It's really very, very detailed, but we're designing, if you're following me, most of the time I'm designing in sRGB, so that's just fine you probably won't need that data but it's there for you. This 150 dpi thing is really important. So this is the print resolution that Spoonflower needs. Now you probably know that photos have to be printed at 300 dpi and all that sort of thing. Just throw that out the window right now because Spoonflower is telling you what it's going to do and you don't get to argue with Spoonflower. You just have to provide Spoonflower with what they want. Now, if you don't send a document up to Spoonflower that is 150 dpi, if your export is not 150 dpi, and the one I'm going to show you is not, what Spoonflower is going to do is it's going to do some mathematics on the file and it's going to increase it to 150 dpi. It's not going to change the contents of the file, it's just going to change the dpi and that's going to have an effect on the document size. And That's fine, that's exactly as it should be. Spoonflower is wonderful in that sense. But you need to understand this stuff about Spoonflower before you actually upload your document because that's going to have an impact on how big your print prints. So knowing that there's some funny things going on here, let's go back to Illustrator and see how what we do in Illustrator is going to impact Spoonflower. So I've got my fruit pattern here inside a document in Illustrator. The first thing I'm going to do is just delete it because we don't want that. When we're sending it to Spoonflower, we have to send the swatch. We've already decided that that's what Spoonflower wants. So we need our pattern swatch. This is our pattern swatch here. I'm going to drag and drop it into the document. 
Now it's way bigger than my document. Yours may not be, mine is. So the first thing I'm going to do is hide my artboard so they're not going to get in the way. And then I'm just going to zoom out because I want to be able to see my pattern swatch. This is what happens, or this is what I get when I drag my pattern swatch out of the swatches panel. So we're going to open up the layers panel because that's where we need to be and we're going to open up all the elements that went into our pattern swatch. So there's all of these little groups in here and there is at the very bottom here this rectangle here. It has no fill, it has no stroke, every single pattern is going to have one and Illustrator does that, it makes it so you probably didn't even know that it was there and it's always going to be at the bottom and it's critical to what we're about to do. So we're going to grab just this rectangle, this no fill, no stroke rectangle and we're going to drag it way up above the group. So we've just moved it to the top. Now we're going to grab everything. So you want to drag over absolutely everything and we're going to make a clipping mask. So you're going to right click and choose make clipping mask. And what that leaves you with here is your pattern swatch. This is a pattern swatch. This is what Spoonflower wants. To get it to Spoonflower we have to save it. So I'm going to choose file and I suggest that you follow this and go to export and save for web legacy. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to save it as a JPEG. Spoonflower will take high quality JPEG. So we're going to set this to maximum because we need it to be the best possible quality JPEG. Now in terms of what's happening when it gets to Spoonflower, let's do some calculations based on this. So I'm just going to bring up my calculator. What we're interested in here, and the reason why I like to use this dialog because it sort of removes some of the complication from what we're about to do. The width of this document is going to be 1211, 1211. If I divide that by 150, which is what Spoonflower is going to do, okay, Spoonflower is going to take this measurement, it's going to divide by 150 and it's going to come up at the end and it's going to say your pattern can print at 8 inches wide. So this could be as large as 8 inches wide. If you want it to be any wider then you need to enlarge your pattern before you exit this dialog because this is the maximum size it's going to be, just over 8 inches wide. Let's clear this and let's test the height. The height of this document is 1961. So we're going to divide that by our 150 because that's what Spoonflower says is the minimum DPI that it will accept. That's what it's going to scale your document to. And so it can be 13 inches tall. So 8 inches by 13, if you want your pattern to go onto a piece of fabric or wallpaper at bigger than that, then you've got to make it bigger than that before you actually exit Illustrator. Otherwise, it's not going to be big enough. And the way you would do that is changing the width and height. So say we wanted, when we get to Spoonflower, we want to be able to print this at 12 inches wide. Let's just go back and get our calculator. So if we want it to be 12 inches wide, multiply by 150 because that's the magic number. It needs to be 1800 pixels wide to print at 12 inches wide when it gets to Spoonflower. So what I could do is make this 1800. Now provided I leave this little icon selected, then Illustrator will automatically make the height the exact size it needs to be to keep my pattern in the same aspect ratio. It's not going to be squashed up or pulled out in any direction. So do your mathematics in this dialog. If you want this to print 12 inches wide, if that's the biggest print that you want to do, then you have to preset it to make sure that you're going to send enough document to Spoonflower for this all to work. And then you're just going to click Save. And I'm going to my desktop and I'm just going to call this Fruit Pattern JPG. I'll click Save. Now we'll swing across to Spoonflower and we're going to upload this. So up in Spoonflower, I'm going into my area here, which is this little person, and I'm going to upload my design. And now I'm going to choose my file. I'm clicking on the pattern. And then I have to confirm with Spoonflower that I own the copyright to this design, and I'll click Upload. Now this is a really large file because it is so wide and so tall and it was maximum quality, it might take a few minutes to upload. So we're going to come back once it's been uploaded. 
Now the pattern has just finished uploading and Spoonflower has automatically swung me into this area. And you can see that the design size is set to 150 dpi. And this is my pattern swatch in here. This is what we exported from Illustrator. So you can see that it's running at this 12 inches wide. It's 12 inches before we get the repeat happening. So this is the proof that we're actually uploaded something that is big enough for what it is that we said we wanted to print. Now we can print smaller. That's easy to do. And Spoonflower is really happy to make this as small as you want. So we could have our repeats really, really small here, but we can't make it any bigger than whatever the size is when you take the number of pixels wide or tall and divide by 150. That's giving you your maximum size. You can't go any bigger than that, but you can go smaller. And so now Spoonflower has taken that little swatch that we made and it's filling this document. And if we want 42 inch width and we want 10 yards of it, then that's exactly what we're going to get. So here's 10 yards at 42 inches wide. And this is what it's going to look like. And Spoonflower needs that pattern swatch because it doesn't know ahead of time how big a piece of fabric you want. And it will print yards and yards and yards of your fabric filled with your seamless repeating design. So in summary, what you've learned so far is that Spoonflower requires you to upload a pattern swatch. It will not accept a document filled with a pattern. They're two very different things. Most other print-on-demand sites don't work the same way as Spoonflower, which is why we're covering Spoonflower in this video, because it is so different. So you need to upload to Spoonflower your pattern swatch. If you're unsure as to how big it can print, if you've got a large print size that you want to match, then you'll need to use a calculator. Take the width in pixels and the height in pixels and divide them by 150. That's going to give you the maximum size that you could print that particular swatch on fabric in Spoonflower. For us, we set ours up to be 12 inches. So the largest possible size for the design that we uploaded is 12 inches wide. It can't go any bigger. It can go smaller. It can't go bigger. And if you need to change the size of anything, then the best place to do it is in the export dialog inside Illustrator. When you go to File, Export, Save for Web Legacy, you can change the size here. That's turning this from a vector design into a bitmap design and it's going to scale it up. It's going to be a really nice scaling. You could scale it up as large as you like because you're going from vector anyway and you're just going to set the width and height to the values that will give you when divided by 150 the maximum size print that you want on your fabric. I hope I've been able to demystify the process of putting patterns up on Spoonflower and getting prints. There's a lot to learn about Spoonflower, but you'll get to know that as you get more experience with working on the site. In the meantime, this is all you need to know to upload a design to Spoonflower and order your first print. So you should be well and truly on your way. If you like carefully researched content like this, clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results, then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses, all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now, you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.